Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dice, coming all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. How you may be getting us across the globe? Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And in the description box, check out some of our uh, other social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and check out some of the cool Wesley Learn series for your kids. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. As you guys can see in the description box in the title, this video is about in a bull market, everybody is a genius. Everybody's a genius in a, in a bull market and how to be smart. So I'm going to give you guys five tips on how to be smart, what is the bull market, um, how the bull market has been going, stocks that you can look out to buy for, five tips, things like that, things to be wary of while we're running right now in the longest bull market we ever had. But stay tuned. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the description of what is the what is a bull market? A bull market is when the market goes up. And in reverse, a bear market is when the market does what? You guessed it, goes down. Pretty smart. But anyway, the thing about it is right now we have been going eight and a half years of a bull market. In most cases, the um the bull market kind of returns and sometimes in three to eight years is when the market uh have cycles. What we mean by cycles is that you have the times where the market is going up. Then you have times when the market is going down. One thing the market, when it does go down, it has, uh, when the market does go down, it, when, when it comes back up, it gets higher than it was before. So in the long term, the market has continuously gone up. But it does, doesn't go up, 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 up. It goes up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 way down, back up, way up, up, down, you know, whatever, almost like an elevator. If you can draw it out over 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or even 100 years. But over these 100 years, um, we always see the market where it would go into runs of a bull run. Being, um, being for a prime example, for like in 2008, we had the dot-com bomb. From 2008, what happened? In, I mean, from 2000, we had the dot-com bomb. In 2008, what did we have happen? Boom, you guessed it. We had the mortgage crisis, right? So now from 2008 all the way to 2018, you know, the market started to spin around around about March 2009, and we've been in this bull market. But the thing about it is, when we're in a bull market, everybody is a genius. Tell you why everybody's a genius? They buy a stock, and they see themselves make money. They're like, whoa, I made money, and I picked this other stock, and it made money. I picked Amazon. I picked Facebook. I picked Google. I picked the marijuana company. I picked whatever the case may be. Man, I'm a genius. And what do people want to do when the stock market is going up? They want to buy more and more. And when they buy more, they continue to see it go up. What's the first thing I do when I see an investment go up? Man, Facebook did very well. I should have brought more. I'm going to buy more. And sometimes, which is not a bad thing, you should always be investing. But when people start to invest, sometimes they become too comfortable and they, they become a self-accredited genius because they say, hey, well, look, I'm making money. What are you going to tell me? And they guess what? They become uh, too friendly and end up buying too much, exposing themselves too much. And when the next market downturn happens, they're in, a hurt, uh, they're in a hurt lot. So you have two types of people. You got some people that are jumping all over the market because, they, hey, I'm a genius now because I picked these stocks and I want to buy more. And I used to watch this stock, and, man, I knew it. These stocks are doing well. I definitely want to get more. Then you have people on the other end of the house who are sitting on the sidelines with a ton of, ton of cash, but they don't want to jump into the market because they feel as though, man, if I jump into the market, then, you know, maybe I might jump in at the wrong time. Right now, this week, I brought this topic up because this is the hottest the stock market has ever been. The hottest, you know, this is the hottest. We, uh, this is, it hit an all-time high. It's very hot, you know, very hot right now. And I see so many people, oh, look at uh, this stock and look at that stock and look at my portfolio. My portfolio is doing well. This is doing well or whatnot. But one of the first things I want to discuss is why are we in this big bull market? One of the main reasons we're in a big bull market is after the bad market, we made a lot of monetary and uh, a lot of a lot of policies to change the way we were doing business. One thing is we lowered the interest rates. So when you lower interest rates, that means that money is very easy to borrow. When you lower interest rate, now that you know it, it maybe cost you 10% to get a loan, now it costs you 2% to get a loan, and the credit score, the credit check is not as difficult. 
So a lot of companies are buying, uh, borrowing a bunch of money, and they are uh, they're, they're uh, borrowing a bunch of money, and they're experiencing growth through money that they're borrowing. Now, Prince, why is that a bad thing? Because we all know that loose money will tighten. And when the money tightens, guess what happens when the money tightens? The money, um, when the money tighten, uh, tightens, now those people who was used to going to the well and grabbing all this money, they can't grab the money. Then they start to uh, have downturns. The customers are not buying like they once were. Now they become hard for cash. They don't have any cash. Business end up closing. So that's what happens. Um, that's the bad thing about when you send companies in the bull market. I'm here to give you guys some tips because I don't want you guys to sit here and become too uh, boastful. So let me give you what we're going to talk about. Number one, the number one thing is defense stock. Listen to some defense stock. Number two, REITs, real estate investment trust. Listen to some real estate investment trust. Number four is Average in. And what I mean by average in, don't throw all your money in at one time. Slowly buy something every single month. For prime example, if you got $5,000, don't just borrow the $5,000 stock that you want to buy now. Buy a little bit month after month after month after month. We'll explain that in more in detail after that. Number four, um, save some of your cash. 10% of your money, 15% of your money should be in cash so you can take advantage of the next downturn. What good is if I told you today that Walmart is having a sale? Everything is 90% off. You don't have any money. You can't even take advantage of the sale. So set some money aside to take advantage of the sale. But the thing about it, you don't want to set too much money aside. It is a thing of having too much money and it's uh, a thing of having no money. So you want to have a happy balance. We'll discuss that further. Number five, over the long term, the people that win in the market usually go with the flow. They don't try to beat the market or outperform the market. They just perform with the market. They can go in line with the market. So those are, those are the five things I want you guys to think about. The first thing, defense stocks. And when I meant to say the defense stocks, I meant to caveat that with dividend-paying stocks. Defense stocks, usually like um, you have stocks like that in the defense industry, right? They don't, when they, when they economic downturn happen, they don't experience a, uh, they don't experience a, a bad moment as much as other companies do. For a prime example, a defense stock doesn't feel as bad because it's uh, uh, because you know it's usually a no growth industry. They kind of consolidate. They kind of have a very slow growth rate. And when the economy goes down, guess what? We still have to have a military. We still need airplanes, things like that. They're kind of in business because they're, they're almost in the category of being recession proof in a way, like the utilities, things like that. Dividends, dividend paying stocks, stocks that pay dividends, even though we know dividends are not guaranteed. But stocks that historically have paid dividends and have increased their payout and dividends over time usually are a good stock. So when the economy takes a downturn, those dividends that are being reinvested, they're buying at a lower price. Let me explain. A prime example, Ford right now today is probably about $10, right? We have an economic downturn. Ford goes down to $5. Even if you didn't purchase any stocks. If the stock is still paying dividends, keyword if, if it's still paying dividends, those dividends are being brought at the $5 price. So as the company moves back up to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you are getting in at the lower end, and you don't have to really be putting more money in. So the, so the market can be uh, very rewarding in that aspect. So those are the defense stocks, right? The next thing is um, defense stocks and dividend-paying stocks are things you want to uh, kind of consider or places you may want to look to uh, put some money because even in an economic downturn, because you got to think about it, take a stock like Facebook that doesn't pay dividends. If it doesn't pay dividends, how do you make money off the stock? You don't make money one way when it's going up. But let's say if we had an economic downturn and Facebook went down for two years straight before it rebounded. That was two years of no growth. So, and also, if they're not paying dividends and if you're not investing in it again, you can't take advantage of the downturn. It was like Warren Buffett said, when it is raining gold outside, raining means it's a bad time outside, it's a bad day outside, but it's gold because you know it will rebound. When it's raining gold outside, you don't want to go out there with your hands in a pump. You don't want to go out there with your hands uh, out. You want to go out there with buckets. You want to take advantage, meaning that you want to invest and take advantage of the downside as much as possible. So those are things to think about. Another thing, REITs, real estate investment trusts. Why they a good thing? Why? Whatever the case may be. 
no matter what type of technology that we invent, now I don't know all the technology, but I know majority of the technology that we invent, invent is nobody has invented a place that we can call home. Meaning that all of us would have to have a place to live. All of us would have to have a place to go. All of us have to have a place to call home. And when that happens, you should, um, when that happens, you should, uh, um, you know, when, when everybody's, going, long story short, everybody's going to be paying rent. Everybody's going to be paying mortgage. Everybody has to have a place to live. And what is a REIT? A REIT is a real estate investment trust. What is a, a real estate investment trust does? It buys shopping centers, it buys malls, it buys homes, it buys commercial buildings, and it rents those things out. And as those things are being rented out, people are paying money for them. It has a cash flow because as long as people have a, need a place to live, we will have a cash flow. Real estate. So in a down economy, those things can still um, pay dividends and still be profitable for you in your in your portfolio. Excuse me, got the hiccups a little bit. Now. Also, averaging in, like I spoke about number three, averaging in. Averaging in is what I'm saying, hey, if you have $10,000 looking to get into the market, you just don't need to put all the $10,000 in a one Apple stock today, and you brought it at an all-time high. Now an economic downturn happens, and you're just sitting there. You know, for prime example, you brought Amazon at an all-time high. It's flying high stock. You brought $5,000 worth, and now you're sitting back today like, man, I got to wait to rebound. I don't have any money. And you have to wait till it gets back to its all-time high and go higher for you to make money. But if you do it this way, you buy a little bit over time, but you don't want to miss out because Amazon may go to $10,000. So you want to buy a little bit at a time. Every month, you buy a little bit. Every quarter, or whatever the case can be. You already know what I'm going to tell you. If you're an investor, if you're listening to this, 90% of the time, I can't recommend anything, but I'm going to say, hey, a good... 70 80% of your portfolio should be the S&P 500 index, low-cost index, commission-free fund. That should be the bulk of your uh, portfolio, depending on your age. We can't say that for everybody, because if you are retired and receiving a paycheck, of course, I'm not going to tell you to go buy a bunch of stocks. But those are things you should be considering. The next thing you should be doing is uh, – the next thing you should be doing is while you're investing um, – you should be diversifying your portfolio as well. Buy some every single month. I don't know the next market crash is. If I did, I would be in a whole lot better position today. And, I, and if you do know, please give me a call or shoot me an email. But since we don't know that, if we continuously buy stock every month, every quarter, whatever you can afford, $40 if you purchase the index or you got a hot stock that you want to get or whatever, you do that over and over and over and over and over and over time, Guarantee you're going to end up in a better position than you are today. That's just just go off of the hundred years of data that we have on the on the United States stock market. Now the next thing is four cash having cash in hand, cash ten percent in cash. Some people say ten percent, some people say fifteen percent. You need to have money where that is easily accessible because think about it. This bull may run for another two, three, four, five, ten years. I don't know how long this bull is going to run. So if you have a whole butt total of money that's sitting in cash and you're 21, 22, 23 years old, you're missing out on some of the greatest moments in the stock market. So with that being said, I mean, yeah, it sounds right. It sounds perfect. Hey, I'm going to just let my money sit on the sideline. When the next market crash happens, I'll jump straight in with all of my cash, and boom, that would be awesome. But, of course, we don't know when the next downturn in the economy happens. Sometimes it takes a perfect uh, match, a perfect blend. And that perfect match, a perfect blend is policies mixed with monetary policy. You know, policies where the president puts something out, you know, who knows what the next economical downturn may be. It may have nothing to do with stocks, but it's something that's going to trigger the next downturn. But if you're not, if you're waiting on that, you may be waiting another two, three, four, five, six, seven years, losing out on some of the greatest returns on the market. So, and if you are sitting money to the side and just going to wait for the next crash, you are, my friend, saying that you can predict the market. It's something that 2% are the best, most educated, sophisticated, experienced investors in the world can't do. So, good luck at that. So, I would recommend that. My thing is to put 10 to 15% down to the side, um, maybe put it in some bonds to where you can, you're not getting stock market returns. 
but you have an ETF that can that you can liquidate at any time to be able to you know you're getting you're getting a nice dividend off of it, and when the market goes down, you can you know whatever liquidate that and be able to jump into the market. That may be a good place to uh, hide some money or to put some money or whatnot for the next economic downturn. Now another thing is number five, go with the flow. I've seen so many people load their stock, their portfolio up, and what they do, they send me screenshots of their winners. Oh, look at my Google stock. You're like, okay, is that the only stock you have? No. My Google stock is up 100%. Well, what about the rest of your portfolio? Oh, well, you know, uh, I'm breaking even here. So what's the overall performance of the stock market? What's the overall performance of your portfolio? Oh, 5%, 6%. So that 100% that you got in one stock, is irrelevant. What good is it if, if I have one hot stock that's doing well, but then I have a bunch of crappy ones? What is my overall performance of my portfolio? It sucks. And and if my portfolio is at a whopping 6% when the market is at 11% for the year, I may want to just go with the flow of the market. If you can't beat them, join them. There you go. You got it right. You can't beat them, you got to join them. I tell people that all the time. When I look at the stock market, if I can't outperform the market, if your portfolio is underperforming the market, you need to be more involved into the market. And the thing is, 90-something percent of the investors will not beat the market consistently over time. You may find a stock market, you may, you may find a mutual fund that outperformed the market one year, two years, maybe three, but when you look at over a 10-year span, 90% of those won't outperform the market, and the ones that do, they won't carry over to the next decade. And these are professional hedge fund managers. These are professional fund managers. So if you can't beat them, join them. Go with the market. Go with the flow. It doesn't take a genius to go with the market. Right? I have tons of video here on my YouTube channel that tells you how to go with the market, tutorials, all of the good stuff like that. Look inside of your 401k at work. If you have a 401k at work, if you're a young person, um, if you have a broad-based common stock S&P 500 fund, looking to invest in it. Look at the fees that are associated with that because those are the things you're going to get a chance to invest in the S&P 500 with tax breaks. Now, I'm not a tax professional. I'm not going to tell you get all into the world of taxes, but that's the case That's the case for me. So those are the things I would like you guys to look forward to and to be involved in. So, um, looking, so we're going to recap it. Defense, dividend stocks, real estate investment trusts, and, you know, uh, average in and diversify, average in and diversify your portfolio. Put 10% of your money in, uh, 10 to 15% of money in cash. You better take advantage of that downturn and also go with the flow. Don't try to beat the market. Go with the flow, right? The people that try to fight, fight the wave going out, usually drown. The people that surf and ride the wave as it's coming in, you know, usually does pretty well. So that's the way I tell people to look uh, um, the bulk of your money, looking to go into the future and uh, invest that way in a low cost, no cost, a no cost, low cost, no commission ETF. That's probably going to be your best way over the long term. And in and, and, and that, you can purchase some individual stocks, some technology stocks to your taste, or maybe you may want to jump to something more risky like the cryptocurrencies or something like that to go into the future. But that's your very risky side. But the bulk of your Portfolio and both of the people that the bulk of the people that's listening and tuning in and watching this right now or in the future or in the podcast, you guys probably won't beat the market over the long term. You know, you know, over five, ten, fifteen, twenty years at that, you're gonna always look back and be like, "Wow, I'm not beating the S&P 500." Wow, you gotta think about it. If you have a stock that's struggling in a very bull market, what do you think is going to happen when a downturn happens? Some people try to go in, look at those P/E ratios, price to earnings ratios. Make sure you're not purchasing something that's way over value. Right now, the S&P 500 is 25 uh, P.E. ratio. Price to earnings ratio is at 25, which is very high. But we also got to remember President Trump passed a new tax reform law at the end of last year, if I'm not mistaken, right, giving a lot of corporate, you know, lowering corporate taxes, which put a lot of money on book sheets for a lot of corporations. So the earnings are coming in to justify the market going up. But I don't want you guys to get caught up because everybody's a genius in a bull market. It's almost like you can't miss. You pick a stock, it goes up. You pick this stock, it goes up. So you're like, oh, I'm a stock market genius. 
be careful, be smart, because the downturn is coming. Anyway, guys, that's my time for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. I have you tuned in across the globe. And always look in the description box and follow us on, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of the great stuff. Check out our books, Wesley Learns. And also uh, shoot emails and drop some comments if you got questions. And to the next video, podcast, a cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.